Okay guys and gals, uh, good morning. Paul Bates here from the helm of Southern Estate. Today I want to talk a little bit about the loop. Because uh, the loop, you know, I get a lot of questions about the loop and people, you know, contact me personally and stuff like that because our channel is not, you know, we're not, uh, you know, I'm not some rich guy on a 50 foot boat running around telling you how great everything is out there. The reality of the loop is, <laughs> You know, it's challenging in that first month, you know, we're getting, right now we're helping Addies get ready, you know, yeah, even yesterday we were putting the chain on, they're marking their chain, we're getting everything ready for the loop, you know, and they keep, you know, it comes back to the same thing. What's, what, what keeps you going? What, what are the guys that complete the loop? You know, not everybody that'll start the loop will complete it because it's just not, you know, there's the, the first month, the easiest way to explain it, the first month is it's, it's a job, man. It's a work, it's a lot of work and the, the learning curve uh, you know, you start down here and that learning curve, you go up to here uh, and getting up here, you know, that, that doesn't happen overnight. You know, when I started on uh, Loop Princess, I, uh, it was, um, I, I hired a captain to take the boat from Pensacola over to here. I had no experience with, ten, uh, uh, with a twin screw boat, really. I had a little bit. Uh, and me and Bev had not been on a boat in 10 years, nothing, not even a rowboat, nothing in 10 years. I just put, put my head down, went to work, and for 10 years after we walked off of our trawler down there in California, I had never even been on a boat in 10 years. That was the first time that I had driven a boat in over 10 years. And so I thought it was important. I hired a captain, and I think it's important, you know, especially, you know, if you're going to try something like this, to get the support and I you know I thank God for Scott every single day you know what I'm saying that first experience I had on the uh, uh, putting the boat in the water after I spent two months of hard sweat labor getting that boat ready for America's Great Loop uh, it was horrific it was just absolutely it was one of the worst days of my life and it was just like the time running out and without Scott there there's just no way I mean everything that could go wrong went wrong and you know, even Scott, as experienced as he was, you know, we he figured it out, and he finally we got the boat going. But without him, I, I'd probably still be sitting there in Pensacola to tell you the truth. I mean, it's just the reality of it. I mean, it's just I didn't know. I had no clue what I was doing. It was, and the learning curve that day, you know, was big. So then. I get the boat back here to Homeport Marina, and again, Scott does all the docking and everything, and he was a great captain, dude. He, you know, Paul, I'll come back out here, we'll take the boat out over to the fuel dock and back one more time before I let you set you on your own. Anyway, just a great guy, and, you know, and and I believe in it, you know. If you're 10 years of being out of it, I needed some help, and I hired a guy, you know, and it cost me, it was less than a thousand bucks, and it was worth every freaking penny of it. Um, but. You know, the whole, the whole thing here is, the way I want to break the loop down for you, that first month, it's brutal. That's going to be the toughest month for people to get past because your learning curve, like I said, you're down here and you got to go up here because now you've got to know the an avionics. Is your boat ready? I would never, ever attempt the loop without a boat that's not ready. And I mean, your cooling system has to be perfect, you know, because if you get out there and you start having, mechan if you're taking one of these 40-year-old trawlers and you start having mechanical issues, you're done. Uh, because you got enough stress dealing with everything else. Where am I getting fuel tonight? Where are we stopping? What we what we started out and what we plan to do on the loop is completely different in the end of what happened. Every day, Bev's a really structured person. She'd get up, she wants to know where she is. She'd try and pick the marinas for seven days in advance. We'd call them, we'd make reservations. It just didn't work. It didn't, in the end, uh, but it was all in that learning curve, you know what I'm saying? And for us, in the end, it was just, we just got up every day and we had a plan A and a plan B and a plan C. That's what we had. And whatever happened, happened. And that's the way we uh, eventually, uh, you know, as we uh, figured things out and figured them out quickly, that's in the end when, when it turned from that job that you hated to go to, to the, I'm starting to enjoy this, you know, and that now this job, now it's a job that you love and then it becomes a vacation uh, and to get to that vacation point that's where you're at you know what I'm saying now now things don't matter uh, we tried to stay out of the group dynamics as much as we could um, and one thing that you know when I say that you know I did have uh, you know like the, the Okeechobee crossing was a perfect example of that there was a five of us we had been together and me and Bev actually kind of uh, raced out of this marina to, to try and catch somebody because we were trying to get with a boat that had experience and had done these things before. 
But by the time we got to Gulfport, Florida, uh, you know, Okeechobee, crossing the Okeechobee there, there's, there's navigational issues because the Navionics doesn't tell you the correct way to go. Um, and there's also, you know, it's a shallow lake and you can get in trouble on it very quickly and the weather can pick up on you and things can go very wrong on that lake very quickly. So me and Bev took a path, you know, we're with a group and uh, most of the boats stayed, but we went. And the reason we went is because we went with a boat that had done o the Okeechobee four times. So we said, we'll, pick, we'll go with his weather window and we'll go with him. He's done it four times. He's not going to go out there and jeopardize his boat, you know. A anyway, we had a very successful crossing on the Okeechobee. Uh, you know, at the end there, it got, uh, it was a little hairy getting into the lock there. But it was 10 minutes and, you know, it's kind of got the adrenaline going. But we learned very quickly, you know, who, who we were, what type of boaters we were, our learning curve. Once it taped off up here on the top, you know, we'd never been able to make the switch on a boat in the middle of the loop. That, that's just, that's insanity. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. But we did it. Uh, but our learning curve was already, you know, three quarters of the way through. And then one of the reasons Pete came with me on the loop again is because here I am now, I go from a 35 foot boat to a 50 foot boat. And I knew I was going to have a learning curve. You know, we go from a 20,000 pound boat to a 50,000 pound boat. Uh, and there is a difference, you know, mooring them and docking them and stuff like that. Also, another thing I can tell you when you guys are looking at captains, uh, you know, having an experienced captain that knows what he's doing on your boat, that's a whole nother thing because I'll tell you a story. You know, one of our uh, subscribers, you know, he calls me up and Paul says, yeah, I did the same thing you did. I hired a captain. But that captain only ever, uh, you know, he had a 200 ton captain's license, but all he ever did was a tour uh, sailboat. He, had, he knew nothing about a 50 foot, uh, 50,000 pound trawler. He didn't know how to get it in the slip any better than the owner did. And he said, anyway, it was a disaster. But he learned. And again, his learning curve that day went from here to here, just, just from that experience alone. But he also learned, you know, you got to ask, ask credentials. You know, when you're talking to somebody that's going to help you, uh, with your boat and maneuver your boat and teach you how to maneuver the boat you know you want to know what kind of experience they have because it'll, it'll enhance your learning curve or it could hurt your learning curve you know you gotta take it for what it is but anyway like I said you know the loop uh, I didn't start out I started out with the loop for me it was a it was a way for me because uh, here we are later on in life I, I want to really uh, enhance my boating skills I want to be a good quality delivery captain. I want to be able to charter somebody's boat for them and be able to uh, maneuver it with confidence and stuff like that. So the loop for me was a way to build those skills. And it's you know it's it's 600 hours of uh, of time. You're not going to get away from that. That's that's what it takes in an eight knot boat. You can do it faster if you have a faster boat. And you know, and I've seen everything out there looping. You know, and I don't care if it's a rowboat. No, well, that's a little exaggerating, but you know, a, a 20 foot um, runabout to you know 24 foot pontoon boats to 40 foot old trawlers to home builds to everything. They're, they're all out there and they're all trying the loop, you know. So, anyway, and like it's just like anything else. Without fa without failure, you can't succeed. So, and you got to remember that, and you just got to get out there and you got to get through that first month. And a lot of people are going to hate this video, you know, because you're not going to be strong enough to show it to your wife and, and she's gonna say yeah look he told you man it's gonna be rough out there and it is it's not you know my channel's really not about you know sitting in that f perfect 50 foot boat telling you everything's great it, you know one of the our famous YouTube channels you know they come into the marina here they don't talk about you know that they over there on the dock uh, they, they, they blew their bow thruster and now they had to come in here and now they don't have a bow thruster and this these are uh, platinum loopers you know what i'm saying so things happen and it just happens it doesn't matter how much experience you have what have the more you have the more things can go wrong so like i don't have a thruster so i'll never have the problems that you know some of these other loopers have i just don't i don't have to worry about a bow line getting stuck in my thruster because i don't have a thruster so i'll always say this you know kiss keep it simple stupid and so, but I also know how to maneuver a twin screw boat without a thruster. And I think everybody should, there's two, two basic things I think you should know for anybody attempting the loop. Be able to dock your boat without any thrusters and be able to change your ray cores or your fuel filters yourself. Once you can accomplish that, they're pretty simple tasks to learn. Even if you're not mechanically inclined, those are two things that you should know how to do and you should feel pretty comfortable 
doing them while attempting America's Great Loop. Because the one thing about the loop is every single day something changes. When you leave that marina, you're going into a different environment, a different situation, a different turnaround. A, you know, a, the tightness of the marina, the boats, how many boats are in there. Everything changes every single time. And even that, when you get past all that, and then the stress of pulling in somewhere where you got, uh, you know, 20, 30 boats pulling out at the same time you're trying to pull in. You know, you need to have your boat skills pretty honed in by then. And, uh, you know, things um, should be getting better and better as the more experience you have and the more dockings that you have. Because you're going to be docking in just about every scenario that you can think of or dream of. And, you know, it doesn't get any... That never gets easier. I can tell you that right now. It's, it's, it, that, that can get very stressful, even in some of the best marinas. You know, you're like, whoo, that was tight. That was close. And, you know, that, that really never ends. But as your boating experience gets better and better and you get better and better handling the boat, the, the stress of all that starts to go away. And again, it's now it becomes that, you know, I love this job. But now it becomes, you know, hey, I'm on vacation. And when you get to that point of feeling like you're on vacation, you're probably about, I would say, a little over uh, halfway through the loop by then. So, and, and it takes a while. I mean, that's because that's where your learning curve is. Anyway, I just wanted to share this uh, video with you. I hope everybody's having a wonderful holiday. We're going to have a happy new year. I think we're going to take uh, Southern State. We were going to take the Nordic Tug over um, to Houston. But those plans have changed, so I'm not sure exactly what date uh, that's going to happen. We should hear something in the next couple days of when the owner is expecting to be better. And then he may just uh, have us uh, take it over for him. We're not 100% we're not sure yet what's going to happen with all that. But anyway, I'll keep you posted on that too. But I think we're going to take a Southern Estate over here to another marina. And there's fireworks and all kinds of stuff over at the wharf. So anyway, that's what our plans are. Happy holidays. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And leave your comments down below. I want to start hearing your comments. If you're dreaming about doing the loop, if you're on the loop, if you're doing the loop, if you didn't complete the loop, if you've completed the loop, I want to hear your comments. Anyway, peace out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.